Namaste Dosto! This is the second time I'm facing racism here in India during the coronavirus pandemic. The first time I was forced to take a corona test in Uttarakhand. The police were called and I couldn't leave. I was held there. I was forced to take a test. And the police called their friends in the media for their cash reward. That is all in another video. More recently, I went to the very famous Old Delhi Spice Market and met a very, very unfortunate character. I was going there to buy spices because I'm trying to perfect my chai masala recipe and the Old Delhi Spice Market has the best and the freshest spices. So let's watch the two clips of what happened. And I did absolutely everything wrong in terms of self-defense, absolutely everything. We'll go over all my mistakes and I'll tell you how you can stay safe if you come in contact with some crazy guy like I did here in India. We'll analyze it all from the point of view of a foreign tourist. And whenever I need spices, I come here and I buy a ton of spices to take home for my family and my friends. And this whole area of Chandani Chowk is a massive wholesale market. There's a, a, a wedding supplies market, a clothing market, a speakers market, a camera market. There's markets for everything here in Chandani Chowk. And now we're gonna go to the spice market. कैसे में हिंदी बोलते है basically told me I'm a foreigner, that I'm Corona, that I should go. Wow. He is an idiot, basically. Now the second clip. This is when he finds me two hours later after I've done my shopping. Hey, Ja. Tu Ja. Maybe they should know you. Pagal. Ab pagal hai. It won't happen. There's a lot of people around. But he is crazy. Crazy as hell. Ah, why did I have to bump into him again? That's pretty scary stuff, right? Especially if you're a foreign tourist and it's your first time here in India and you come across something like this. Now, it's not my first time here. I live here. I'm married to an Indian and I'm quite comfortable having a fight with someone on the street and not letting people push me around. It's kind of part of life here. You will see these verbal fights happening when you're here in India. Or maybe I've just spent too much time in Haryana, hey na? Now, how I acted was absolutely stupid from a self-defense and a self-preservation point of view. Absolutely stupid. And the thing is, I know better. I know self-defense, I know how to handle myself, but I didn't take any of that advice because I feel like I'm a local here, I feel comfortable here, I feel like this is my home and I'm not afraid to have a small, you know, fight with somebody. But this was stupid of me. And if you're a foreigner, you never do or act like I did. So let's watch those two clips again and I'll walk you through everything I did wrong and what you should be doing if this happens to you in India or anywhere in the world in fact. So at this point, I can hear him yelling at me from behind. But I'm thinking like, if I just ignore him, maybe he'll go away. But he doesn't. He crosses the road and approaches me. And just look how angry he is. Look at the look on his face and look at how rudely he's talking to me as well. And what did I do? I fought with him. I was fighting him. That is the dumbest thing you can do. There's three things you're gonna learn in this video. Firstly, you need to de-escalate the situation. You need to escape. And thirdly, you need to evade the person. So what I did with fighting with him was escalated the situation. Totally wrong thing to do. I should have put my hands up and said, I'm sorry. And you put your hands up because it's like, it's like saying, no, no, I don't wanna fight. You know what I mean? It's that kind of signal you're giving him. And you're like, sorry. This much English he will understand. The word sorry, they will understand, okay? 
because obviously you won't be speaking Hindi like, like I was, okay? So, sorry. That should be enough for him to chill out and you to escape and then to evade him. But evasion probably is not needed because he's not going to follow you, okay? He does follow me later. And in clip two, well, there's a second clip because I didn't evade him, right? I failed again. And I, I did try to de-escalate it a little bit by telling him I'm not a foreigner, I'm an Indian, but I said it in a kind of rude way and he wasn't buying it anyway. Like, how does he think I'm speaking Hindi? I just thought it might work. He might just believe it and just leave me and let me go because with his permission or not, I was going to buy my spices. So I tried to de-escalate it that way, but it, it all happened wrong, okay? So the best de-escalation method is sorry. I'm not sorry, but you say it just to de-escalate the situation. Never tell someone to calm down when they're angry, okay? It doesn't work, they won't calm down. You gotta kinda meet them halfway somewhat and he has to say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going. Then escape, step two, okay? Escape. But I didn't do that. And he has found me. There he is while I was filming some B-roll outside the market. And he's actually talking to his friends and other people on the street, trying to get them to join in with him against me. This could turn into a lynching situation, but it didn't because the other people there are not like him, okay? They're just not like him and they're not interested. Thank God for that. This is most people. Most people aren't like this guy, okay? This guy is just some crazy guy on the street. No one else, no one else gives a damn. And if you watch the video, you'll see how nice everybody else was to me. That is normal life here in India. I just came across a crazy guy. So what did I do? I fought with him again, yelled at him while he was yelling at me and trying to get people to join him and getting rid of me. Let's see what else happens. So I escaped, I got out of there. So I failed on de-escalating and I failed on evading him. He shouldn't have found me again, right? But that's where he worked. I went and brought my spices and, you know, chances are quite high that he was gonna find me. So I didn't evade him. I failed at everything. Okay, guys, do not be like me. I was lucky. I was able to escape after that. He didn't chase after me and it didn't get violent. But what if it had got violent? Well, in India, you can use self-defense and you can use force to protect your life if there's an imminent threat to it. And of course there was a threat to it because this guy just said he was gonna hit me. That's a threat to my life and I can use self-defense and force. And here in India, a lot of self-defense weapons are available. The full arsenal minus guns is available. So like nunchucks, knuckle dusters, pepper spray, stun guns, and even tasers. Okay, you can even taser someone here. You can carry that stuff, but you can't carry guns. India has some of the strictest gun laws in the world. I'll tell you about what weapons I was carrying with me soon. But what if it had got violent right there and then? How much force could I use to protect myself? Well, there's no one size fits all, okay? Like, you can only use what force is reasonable. So, for example, if this guy's coming at me and he's gonna hit me like that, you can argue that you could use deadly force. Because you could get hit, you fall over, and you crack your skull on the ground. That's a real fear, okay? That can happen. But what you should be thinking, and what I was thinking was, you have to use the least amount of force possible. The least amount of force, okay? You don't wanna to go to that extreme. You just need to use enough force to stop him so you can escape. And that's why I had pepper spray, but I failed. The pepper spray was in my backpack. Absolutely useless if it's in my backpack, okay? It should have been in my quick draw holster, so I could have drawn it and been like, spray across the eyes. So what I would have done is, if it had come to violence, I would have put my hands up like that and be like, sorry man, please, please, no, I don't wanna fight. I don't wanna fight with you. And that signal is very different signal to this, right? This is like, yeah, we're gonna fight now. <laughs> hey man, you don't wanna give this signal. That's why you put your hands up like this. And this is another self-defense type of, of posture. So you can gouge their eyes out. You know what I mean? 
but that 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 kind of whole fighting like that goes beyond this video but you know that's what you should do you can kind of hit their punches away whatever and if he had got close enough within like one to three meters and he was still the threat was still imminent from him spray across the eyes with the pepper spray he's immobilized for 30 minutes he can't see and his face is burning from the pepper spray and like i said this is legal to carry in india so that's what i would have done if i had the pepper spray in my pocket now i didn't so it would have gone the hand-to-hand -hand combat now there's a big big issue here okay let's say you have to fight for your life now this guy is lunging a punch at you what happens if everybody around you sees you beating a small Indian laborer in the middle of a laborer's market? There's two ways it can go. The good way it can go is they come and they help you. You know, they help stop the problem you're having, not they help beat him up, okay, they help stop the problem. The second option is they see you beating a small Indian laborer that is just not a good look. A big white guy beating a small Indian laborer is not a good look. And they take his side and then you get lynched. Okay, so you always, always, always want to avoid violence. You don't want to have to deal with the police. You don't want to have to deal with a crowd. Like, it's just a last resort. And you want to use as little force as possible so you can get the hell out of here. That's why I like pepper spray, you know? Quick spray, you can bail. So yeah, that's my carry. So I totally failed to de-escalate, to escape, and to evade. That's what I should have done. Do not be like me. Do not be a smart ass. Do not try and fight back like I did. It's just not worth it. You'll just escalate the situation. And like we saw, it will get violent, and he may even try and get friends on his side to help him. That's what can happen. Now let's end on a positive note, okay? India is the most incredible country in the world to travel to. The locals are not like this. This was an unfortunate situation. Indians are the most hospitable, friendly, and they just treat guests as God. This is a saying in their culture, actually. Aditi Devo Bawa. Guest is God. So keep your travel dreams alive for India. And after COVID-19, once people have gotten over this fear they have of foreigners, okay, then it's time to come back. And I will let you know when that time is through this YouTube channel. If you guys want to support the work that I do, hit that join button, become a channel member. And as always, Jay Hind.